Good morning. My name is Greg Stafford. I host these morning videos Monday through Friday at 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for people around the world who want to come together to meet and to consider a portion of the biblical record or other related histories and teachings so that we start our day or end our day, depending on where you are, uh, on a good note with something in mind that we can use to benefit from personally and to help others that we meet throughout our day. We're reading through the New Testament letter of 2 Thessalonians. We're in chapter 3, and I'm going to go ahead and read uh, today's verses, which are verses 1, 2, and 3 from chapter 3. I'll make a brief application, and then we'll be on our way. If you're interested in more information about uh, the letter of 2 Thessalonians, check my earlier day text videos with 2 Thessalonians in the title. And I provide information at the start of the videos pertaining to each new book we consider that has to do with the history, manuscript, authority, and other features regarding these various uh, New Testament documents and the locations that they're addressed to or from. So, uh, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, this is what we read according to the Great Message Translation, which is my own translation that I've been working on for several years. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1 says, As for what remains, brothers, you must pray for us so the message of the Lord may advance, and so it may be honored the same way as it is among you. Verse 2, Also, you must pray that we may be delivered from hurtful and evil people. Since not everyone believes the best available reasons, yet the Lord is trustworthy. He will make you strong and he will defend you from the wicked one. The wicked one is another way of referring to Satan or the devil. The original serpent, the one who began the rebellion with our first human parents in Eden by suggesting to them another way to live. Another way than what God, Jah, had been showing them as far as how to live and what to do. So we're allowed to make choices and sometimes our choices put us at odds with Jah or put us on the same side as people like the devil because any choice in opposition to or against Jah is essentially Satanism. And I don't mean something, you know, in the, and whenever we hear Satanism, we think of something like super evil, super bad. But really, what you should think of more so is an, an alternative view to Jah. That's really what Satanism boils down to. Ways of doing things that are against or other than the way that Jah says to do things. So there's never a way to do something that's better than the Jah way. But we choose these other ways on our own at times because we have the opportunity to do so. And if our desire gets the better of us, we can make bad decisions. We can choose something that Jah says is not good for us, but that we think is good for us anyway or that we listen to somebody else like the devil or somebody else who's similar to him and that they're promoting a non-jaw or an anti-jaw way. Okay, so you notice in verses 1 and 2 of today's text, he twice refers to what we should pray for. In verse 1, he talks about praying for the message, the great message to advance. The great message is the message about Jesus, the one who was foretold as early as in the Garden of Eden when Jah spoke of a seed after they had rebelled against him. And then later on in the writings of Moses and others, Isaiah, David, they all speak about the coming of the Messiah who would give his life on behalf of many and pave the way to make many righteous. So that's the great message that all centers around the coming of the Messiah or Jesus who gives us the way to have a relationship with Jah once again apart from the Mosaic Law and offering all these sacrifices, we put our faith in Jesus, who already gave the ultimate sacrifice by dying for no reason other than he was faithful to Jah. 
That's the great message. And so Paul also says in verse 2 to pray that we're delivered from hurtful and evil people. Not everybody likes us. Not everybody likes John. Not everybody likes Jesus. That's okay. I mean, it's not okay. We don't like it, but we cannot change it. So we have to tolerate. We have to accept the fact not everybody's going to like us or our message or what we do. And to the extent we can get along with them, then we should. If we cannot, then we should avoid those people or you know, stay away from them in ways where we can still do what we're doing without getting involved in, in their affairs. All right, now notice verse 3. Let's wrap it up here. He says, the Lord is trustworthy and he will make you strong. And notice the last part. He will defend you from the wicked one. You cannot win. You cannot win in a battle against Satan. You can win in the sense that if you have faith in John, and you stand in that faith like Jesus did, and you quote the text and you rely on him, then you can win. But you cannot win ultimately. He's too smart. He's been around too long. He knows what we do. Now, Jah has authority over him, so he's not unlimited. Just like with Job, he, there's things he cannot do. Things a lot of the, the, the spirits cannot do that Jah allows or does not allow. But you still can't win. You're not going to defeat Satan tactically in the sense that you're always going to be able to outsmart him. You will be able to here and there. And of course, if we, if we use our God-given intelligence and, and conscience and we trust in Jah like the text says... We, we can defeat him or, or avoid these traps. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, in the end, we're all going to die because he, he gets us to make mistakes or we follow in his way our, uh, just on our own at some point because we, we are humans who have descended from other humans who have made mistakes and they pass these things on to us. And while we can struggle with them and try to overcome them, at times, they get the better of us. So this is what I mean. You cannot win ultimately against the devil because he's going to have something against you. Remember, he's the accuser. He's the one who points out every single thing you do to Jah to try to get Jah to turn against you and not accept you so he can keep doing what he wants, knowing that they're continuing to look for those who they will select among humankind uh, to bring about uh, God's will for the earth as part of the kingdom that we're told about. So keep these things in mind. If, if you are defeated or you lose a battle, you give in, your weaknesses get the better of you, don't get depressed. You are to pray to Jah for forgiveness. Rise up again and do your best. The Lord Jesus will defend you. Jah will defend you. They can beat the devil. They already have. But you should not allow yourself to become arrogant to the point where you think, you are so spiritual, so smart, that you don't need them and that you can see what the devil is doing and you have authority. And, and we do have authority and power as Christians, but not to the extent where you do, cannot rely on Jah and Jesus. That's where our, our power comes from. He's from Jah and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So rely on them. Do not trust in yourself. And be careful about the devil. He's not stupid in the sense that he doesn't know what to do to succeed in the ways he wants. He's obviously not the smartest spirit in the sense that he challenged Jah. But just like humans who challenge other humans, you know, they're more familiar with Jah. So for them, it's a different situation, circumstance. We shouldn't try to think we can know even that beyond the facts we're given. But things happen differently in those realms. So... We should focus on us, humankind, and where we see that the devil or evil spirits are trying to get to us, trust in Jah, do the best you can, and they will defend you, and you can succeed. So never feel like you cannot get out of a situation where you feel like you've been trapped, especially because of your beliefs. And then... Job will deliver you from anyone who does those things. Hurtful, evil people, like it's talked about in verse 2. They're there, just like the devil is there. But we have good people too, just like John and Jesus are there. So try to stay close with those that you know are trying to do the right things. 
and then you'll be less likely to fall into one of the traps set by the devil or those who, who follow him. All right, so that concludes our day text for today. Just a few verses, but again, I find so much in so little so often. And so I like to share them with you so we can keep these things with us throughout the day, knowing that even if you get defeated or you're in a terrible spot, that you will be defended by those whom you worship if you look to them and trust in them. So I pray you all have a wonderful day. Enjoy Christmas Eve or whatever it is that you're doing in the part of the world where you live and use every opportunity you can to talk about the great message. Talk about the coming of Jesus and fulfillment of the prophecies written before he was born and the God who made it so that he would come and give us a way to have life with him again. These are some of the stories of the Bible that we believe in and we try to share with others, especially around this time of year. So if you get a chance, do it. You might make somebody's day a little bit better, or you might enjoy the time you have with them a little bit more. So with that in mind, I hope you all have a wonderful day. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you.